Welcome to Trail Talk, our weekly series here on LTTV. I'm Chris Ford. I'm the Director of Marketing for Lincoln Trail College and Illinois Eastern Community Colleges. And as always, I am joined by Dr. Zahi Atala, the President here at LTC. Hello, folks. Yes, I'm Zahi Atala. And today our topic is a little different from the previous two weeks, Chris. That's right. So we're going to talk a little bit more about um, sort of some, some educational theory here. And we're going to be talking about pathways. Yeah, we're going to be talking in particular about guided pathways. It's, it's wrapped in a lot of uh, myth, and, and we're going to try to demystify it. We're going to try to, uh, to walk folks through the fact that it is not a cabal of people sitting somewhere trying to direct us. Rather, it's a set of best practices that are in the best interest of our students, faculty, and staff. So, Zahi, explain it like I'm five. What, what is Guided Pathways? Sure. Guided Pathways is, is the, um, let's call it the brainchild of the Community College Research Center at Columbia University Teachers College. And those folks have gone around uh, over years looking at basically uh, studies and in, in, in trials uh, that are empirically based that have shown changes in impact on student success, student retention, as well as student satisfaction. Uh, simply put, it is uh, no different than the ISO uh, accreditation practices for businesses. Really, a, a set of best practices uh, aimed at helping us serve our students better, aimed at keeping them in classroom so they can succeed in achieving their goals. So there are four pillars when we talk about guided pathways. Talk about those. Yeah, so the, the they look at the they look at the, uh, the idea of student uh, success not as a monolith or a series of silos, rather as a, a house that's built on a strong framework and foundation of pillars. And those are four. The first one is about creating what they call pathways, meta-majors, areas of emphasis or study where a student uh, can choose to be uh, in a mode of trial and rather than starting from square zero uh, every single time there are certain courses that are in common across multiple disciplines or programs the second uh, pillar uh, is to get the students as quickly as possible onto credit bearing classes a large proportion of our students go into um, prerequisite uh, developmental education and, and as, as you and I always do, when we forget what the word meaning uh, is, what do we do? We go to a dictionary, whether a physical one or, or online. That is, we're remediating our current gap when we need it. And the CCRC has done hundreds of studies across the nation, and they have found that, uh, in effect, the uh, co-requisite remediation is a far more effective way to get the uh, best intent to the students and to walk them through the processes. The third pillar is, once the student has chosen a meta-major or a pathway, how can we keep them on it? How can we support them? How can we provide them with the wraparound services? And fourthly, how do we measure what they've learned? An A or a B or a C or an F grade do not really measure what they've learned. They measure in a very subjective way what we think uh, they've done uh, right or wrong in the classroom. So how can we measure what they have actually learned? So Zahi, over the, the coming few weeks, uh, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into these four pillars, what they mean, uh, how other people have used these, uh, and, and how they could apply here at Lincoln Trail College. So uh, as you enjoy Trail Talk here on LTTV, uh, go ahead and like us, subscribe us. We're on social media, uh, obviously right here on YouTube. Uh, we're also, uh, Lincoln Trail College is on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, everywhere you want us to be. So uh, follow us there, and uh, that's going to do it for this week's edition of Trail Talk. For Dr. Zahi Atala, I'm Chris Ford, and we'll see you next week. Thank you.